Hi, everyone. Are you OK? No. Tired? Uh, I will try to be short. Uh, so my name is Pavel. There is James. Uh, from, we are from Last Mile Tech team. Uh, so after we received the route from, from the routing team, we, it's, it's actually time to start deliveries. And uh, Alex gave a good introduction in how we generally do this. Uh, but in simple words, we, we have an app. Uh, uh, every, every driver has uh, our, own rep, uh, our own app. He loads the routes. Then he goes to the cross dock in his van, uh, finds the orders that he needs to deliver, to deliver, loads them, and delivers to each customer. Uh, but of course, uh, life is not ideal, and the, the weather uh, as well. So we have uh, all sorts of problem, problems on the ground, uh, such as heavy rain, uh, traffic jams, or sometimes it's not easy to get to deliver locations, especially in the morning. And given that we have uh, uh, pretty high on-time delivery uh, KPI, uh, we, we try to deliver pretty much every order on time. Uh, we need to have real-time dashboards to see what actually happens on the ground and uh, act quickly before customers get uh, un unsatisfied. Uh, we need to have event-driven decisions uh, real to make them real-time, send SMS, uh, do some kind of adjustments to, uh, to what's happening. And we need to have a data warehouse uh, with all the uh, events happening on the ground with uh, drivers and with deliveries so that routing team and everyone else will be able to get their insights. Uh, so uh, the idea is to get all the events, basically everything that we can from the device, from each device, starting from location, GPS, uh, accuracy of GPS, battery, device information, uh, transport mode, uh, you know, on the, on the vehicles, we have uh, devices that uh, produce uh, engine on and off in the events, GPS also. So we want to get all the events into one system. And uh, so we, you know, everyone knows what is CRUD, right? It's the most, one of the most uh, popular ways to build web services. Uh, it's actually very good because uh, it allows us to start services very fast and deliver them to production uh, quickly. But uh, the problem with them is, sorry. Uh, yeah. So w the problem with, uh, with these services is, um, I'm very sorry, I have these uh, new technologies that I'm trying and <laughs> it's not very, um, the problem is that uh, it allows you to do updates, right? So when you do updates, you actually delete the data, and it doesn't help you to store everything that you have. So you want, if you want to have a, a change log, then uh, this change log should be written manually, uh, right, in a, in, a, in a separate call to the database. And you need to maintain it for every event. If you want to do an event-driven uh, uh, system, you need to generate event every time manually. Uh, so we decided to try Akka for this project. Uh, Akka is a toolkit for building reactive applications. Everyone knows what is reactive. Basically, it allows you to, do, uh, to build responsive applications which answer, answer fast, which are elastic, means that they can scale horizontally. Uh, easily, which are resilient, which means that they are uh, uh, not failing uh, on, on uh, simple errors in the code, and uh, which are message driven by design. So, actor model, uh, ACA implements actor model, and actor model is uh, a different approach. Um, like, uh, it's if object oriented model says that everything is an object, actor model says that everything is an actor. Uh, which means that the driver or order or a cart uh, in uh, the system, in, a, in the such system, will be an uh, actor. Uh, actor. Actors are very lightweight, so it's only 300 bytes uh, of heap in, uh, uh, in Scala and Java implementation. Uh, 
they communicate via messages, and this is the only way to communicate between actors. And they don't share the state, which means that if actor wants to know something about other actor, he needs to send a command and wait for the response. Uh, so you probably heard that WhatsApp uses actor model. Uh, it was first implemented in Erlang, WhatsApp user Erlang, and in uh, WhatsApp, every user is an actor, and they have more than 300 million users right now. So. Uh, why we decided to use uh, to try Akka? Because uh, first it's uh, uh, in Scala and we use Scala and, and Java um, in uh, languages in Redmart uh, mostly. Uh, on the single machine, uh, it allows to send over 50 million messages in a second uh, between actors. Uh, so it's very performant. Uh, it's distributed by design. Uh, it allows you to do clustering out of the box. It's fault tolerant. Uh, you can easily handle uh, all the exceptions and not fail the, the whole system. And it allows you to implement event sourcing, which I will be talking uh, uh, next. So this is Scala. Uh, I hope everyone can understand. Let's try to uh, see what happens uh, here. This is a driver actor, uh, like the simplest uh, dri driver actor. And what we try to do is to have a real-time view of the driver of his location. Location, it might be a GPS coordinate. So uh, it has a receive method, and we receive update location command with the location, and we just update the, the state of the driver. And also, we have a get state command, and it returns the current state. So I think it's quite simple. And this is pretty much everything you need to write to, to get a, a real-time view of the driver. Uh, but the problem with that approach is that actually if you kill that actor or restart the system or just do a deployment of new version, you will lose all the data. Uh, and it, it's not what we want. Uh, we want to keep everything. Uh, so here comes uh, persistence, echo persistence. Uh, it's a wrapper uh, and uh, it supports uh, pretty much every data store that you can name. Uh, Mongo, Cassandra, various SQL servers, uh, even Kafka. So here is the driver actor for particular driver ID. We need to define the persistence ID that will be used to store all the data related to this driver in the uh, data store. Now we have a receive command method. But instead of just uh, directly changing the state of the driver, which is somewhere around these uh, dots, uh, skipped on this slide, uh, we first persist the if we generate an event from the location, then we persist it, and only after that we change the actual state of the driver. Uh, this is a uh, the call to the method update state. So what is important here is when the actor is killed or the, the system is restarted, uh, we have a method receive recover, which uh, what happens is we, we create an actor, we load everything from the journal, Akka does that for, for us, and it feeds the stream of events recorded in the, uh, in the data store in the sequence that they were generated, and this, it sends it to this method. So uh, the problem here is that it may be slow, but the great thing is that we, we have stored uh, all the events, we have stored everything, and we get the state of the actor, uh, uh, like the, the, the latest uh, state of the actor. But uh, we can fix it easily with snapshots. So for example, if uh, we configure a snapshot to take a snapshot every 10 events, we don't need to replay everything. So for us, if we replay all the events from the journal for each driver, it will be thousands of events. And if, for example, we just uh, redeployed our application with new version, it may take uh, several minutes to, ju to just restore the state of uh, less drivers. It doesn't make any sense. So we, of course, use uh, snapshots. So the, the only change that you need to do is uh, uh, if you, 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 you put your own uh, rule here, if you need to take a snapshot, you just take a snapshot. And then in receive recover, you create another case, another, putter, another matching to the uh, snapshot, and you just use it. And it's absolutely seamless. Uh, 
So I mentioned uh, about event-driven uh, uh, system, uh, event-driven uh, uh, logic. Uh, how can we do that? Let's say we have, uh, again, our driver actor, and uh, we want to, do to execute some logic. So for example, we want to send this message to a web socket and display it on real-time uh, UI, which we show to our transport coordinators. Or we want to do some other processing uh, uh, if required. For example, we want to see, uh, we want to generate uh, some, another different state of the driver and notify someone if something wrong happens. So we create this listener. We subscribe to, we subscribe to driver dash driver ID events or all driver events if we want. And here in the driver actor, we just, after we have persisted an event, we just publish this event to the so-called mediator here. It's also out of the box. Then uh, we have this real-time state of the driver. And how about querying all the drivers? So uh, if we stop right here and we'll only use what we have, what I've just described, you will have to query all the actors, all the drivers uh, in parallel or in sequence and it will give you the state, the real-time state of each driver. But it's not very efficient. Um, uh, maybe it's even slow. So you may have heard about an approach called CQRS. It's pretty old already. So it stays for command query responsibility segregation, means separation. So command side, we just discussed. Again, we get the command via HTTP interface or WebSocket or whatever. Uh, we verify that this command is valid. We generate an event from there, uh, from this command. We store it in the journal, and then we change the state. This is a command side. But then we need a query side where we can actually see the driver state uh, in the database, right? So as you see here in the journal, we don't have the driver state. We just store the differences, the events. Uh, and uh, on the query side, we want to see this driver state and display it in some uh, you know, typical CRUD interface where, sorry, just view interface with pagination, for example, with all the drivers and their locations. So uh, the most difficult challenge here is how to actually generate this uh, establish this connection between journal and query side. Uh, again, ACA helps us. Uh, the idea is just to stream events directly from the journal. Uh, what happens is we read events from the journal as they appear, one by one, real time, without any delay. Then we give the driver view, whatever it is, uh, from the uh, data store. We transform it using the new event from the journal. Then we insert result back to the database or update it in that query side. And then uh, we store the offset of the journal so that if we restart this process, we will continue from the last successfully uh, read uh, uh, journal entry. Uh, this is the code. This is pretty much uh, everything you need to write. We use persistence query framework from Akka, uh, connect to Cassandra journal. Uh, we run the start processing method, uh, get all driver updated events from the saved offset. We buffer them by 100, 100 entries or 10 seconds. And then we just uh, run process event function, which does all the transformation, for example, transformations or writes directly to the uh, preferred data store. And then we just save the offset of, the, uh, of this process. And that's all. So now the question is how to scale everything. I mentioned that Akka allows you to do uh, scaling out of the box. So here we have uh, Akka cluster. Uh, it's uh, also provided out of the box. Uh, it has one coordinator. And uh, on each node, you run a shard region for each uh, type of the entity that you want to track. So for example, uh, actor 1, 2, uh, 2, 6, these are uh, driver actors. And uh, we run each driver shard region on each of the nodes. And because actor 2 can't send uh, a message to other uh, actors on other nodes, 
of course, we don't want to model the communication between drivers, but let's say we have another entity, uh, like uh, driver actor may want to send an, uh, a message to another actor. Because uh, driver actor doesn't know where this another actor sits in which node. He needs to communicate via shared regions. So he sends a message to shared region uh, saying that I want to send a message to the uh, uh, actor with this ID. Uh, please route this message. And uh, through, uh, through coordinator, a local shared region knows to which node it should be routed and it happens seamlessly. So this message is delivered to another shared region, and then it goes to uh, a uh, target actor. Uh, so that's the message that I wanted to deliver you today. Uh, if you have any questions about this technology or other questions, I will be happy to answer.